a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Vladimir Lenin Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, better known by the alias Lenin, was a Russian communist revolutionary, politician and political theorist. He served as head of government of Soviet Russia from 1917 to 1924 and of the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1924. Under his administration, Russia and then the wider Soviet Union became a one-party communist state governed by the Russian Communist Party. Ideologically a Marxist, he developed political theories known as Leninism. Born to a wealthy middle-class family in Simbirsk, Lenin embraced revolutionary socialist politics following his brother's 1887 execution. Expelled from Kazan Imperial University for participating in protests against the Russian Empire's Tsarist government, he devoted the following years to a law degree. He moved to St. Petersburg in 1893 and became a senior Marxist activist. In 1897, he was arrested for sedition and exiled to Shashinskoy for three years, where he married Nadia Shtakrupskaya. After his exile, he moved to Western Europe, where he became a prominent theorist in the Marxist Russian Social Democratic Labour Party. In 1903, he took a key role in RSDLP ideological split, leading the Bolshevik faction against Julius Martov's Mensheviks. Encouraging insurrection during Russia's failed revolution of 1905, he later campaigned for the First World War to be transformed into a Europe-wide proletarian revolution, which as a Marxist he believed would cause the overthrow of capitalism and its replacement with socialism. After the 1917 February Revolution ousted the Tsar and established a provisional government, he returned to Russia to play a leading role in the October Revolution in which the Bolsheviks overthrew the new regime. Lenin's Bolshevik government initially shared power with the left socialist revolutionaries, elected Soviets, and a multi-party constituent assembly, although by 1918 it had centralized power in the new Communist Party. Lenin's administration redistributed land among the peasantry and nationalized banks and large-scale industry. It withdrew from the First World War by signing a treaty with the Central Powers and promoted world revolution through the Communist International. Opponents were suppressed in the Red Terror, a violent campaign administered by the state security services. Tens of thousands were killed or interned in concentration camps. His administration defeated right and left-wing anti-Bolshevik armies in the Russian Civil War from 1917 to 1922, and oversaw the Polish-Soviet War of 1919-1921, responding to wartime devastation, famine, and popular uprisings. In 1921 Lenin encouraged economic growth through the market-oriented new economic policy. Several non-Russian nations secured independence after 1917, but three reunited with Russia through the formation of the Soviet Union in 1922. In increasingly poor health, Lenin expressed opposition to the growing power of his successor, Joseph Stalin, before dying at his dacha in Gorky. Widely considered one of the most significant and influential figures of the 20th century, Lenin was the posthumous subject of a pervasive personality cult within the Soviet Union until its dissolution in 1991. He became an ideological figurehead behind Marxism, Leninism and thus a prominent influence over the international communist movement. A controversial and highly divisive individual, Lenin is viewed by supporters as a champion of socialism and the working class while critics on both the left and right emphasize his role as founder and leader of an authoritarian regime responsible for political repression and mass killings. Childhood 1870-1887 Lenin's father, Ilya Nikolaevich Ulyanov, was from a family of serfs. His ethnic origins remain unclear, with suggestions being made that he was Russian, Chuvash, Mordvin, or Kalmyk. Despite this lower class background he had risen to middle class status, studying physics and mathematics at Kazan Imperial University before teaching at the Penza Institute for the Nobility. Ilya married Maria Alexandrovna Blank in mid-1863. Well educated and from a relatively prosperous background, she was the daughter of a German-Swedish woman and a Russian Jewish physician who had converted to Christianity. It is likely that Lenin was unaware of his mother's Jewish ancestry, which was only discovered by his sister Anna after his death. Soon after their wedding, Ilya obtained a job in Nizhny Novgorod, rising to become director of primary schools in the Simbirsk district six years later. 
Five years after that, he was promoted to Director of Public Schools for the province, overseeing the foundation of over 450 schools as a part of the government's plans for modernization. His dedication to education earned him the Order of Saint Vladimir, which bestowed on him the status of hereditary nobleman. Lenin was born in Simbirsk on the 22nd of April 1870 and baptized several days later. As a child, he gained the nickname of Velodur, a diminutive of Vladimir. He was one of eight children, having two older siblings, Anna and Alexander. They were followed by three more children, Olga, Dmitri, and Maria. Two later siblings died in infancy. Ilya was a devout member of the Russian Orthodox Church, and baptized his children into it, although Maria, a Lutheran by upbringing, was largely indifferent to Christianity, a view that influenced her children. Both parents were monarchists and liberal conservatives, being committed to the Emancipation Reform of 1861 introduced by the reformist Tsar Alexander II. They avoided political radicals, and there is no evidence that the police ever put them under surveillance for subversive thought. Every summer they holidayed at a rural manor in Kokushkino. Among his siblings, Lenin was closest to his sister Olga, whom he often bossed around. He had an extremely competitive nature and could be destructive, but usually admitted his misbehavior. A keen sportsman, he spent much of his free time outdoors or playing chess, and excelled at school, the disciplinarian and conservative Simbirsk classical gymnasia. In January 1886, when Lenin was 16, his father died of a brain hemorrhage. Subsequently, his behavior became erratic and confrontational, and he renounced his belief in God. At the time, Lenin's elder brother Alexander, whom he affectionately knew as Sasha, was studying at St. Petersburg University. Involved in political agitation against the absolute monarchy of the reactionary Tsar Alexander III, Alexander studied the writings of banned leftists and organized anti-government protests. He joined a revolutionary cell bent on assassinating the Tsar and was selected to construct a bomb. Before the attack could take place the conspirators were arrested and tried, and in May, Alexander was executed by hanging. Despite the emotional trauma of his father's and brother's deaths, Lenin continued studying, graduated with a gold medal for exceptional performance, and decided to study law at Kazan University. University and Political Radicalization, 1887-1893 Upon entering Kazan University in August 1887, Lenin moved into a nearby flat. There, he joined a Zemely Akstvo a form of university society that represented the men of a particular region. This group elected him as its representative to the university's Zemely Akstvo Council, and in December, he took part in a demonstration against government restrictions that banned student societies. The police arrested Lenin and accused him of being a ringleader in the demonstration. He was expelled from the university, and the Ministry of Internal Affairs exiled him to his family's Kokushkino estate. There. He read voraciously, becoming enamored with Nikolai Janishevsky's 1863 pro-revolutionary novel What is to be done. Lenin's mother was concerned by her son's radicalization, and was instrumental in convincing the interior ministry to allow him to return to the city of Kazan, but not the university. On his return, he joined Nikolai Fedorsev's revolutionary circle, through which he discovered Karl Marx's 1867 book Capital. This sparked his interest in Marxism, a socio-political theory that argued that society developed in stages, that this development resulted from class struggle, and that capitalist society would ultimately give way to socialist society and then communist society. Wary of his political views, Lenin's mother bought a country estate in Alakivka village, Samara Oblast, in the hope that her son would turn his attention to agriculture. He had little interest in farm management and his mother soon sold the land, keeping the house as a summer home. In September 1889, the Ulyanov family moved to the city of Samara, where Lenin joined Alexei Sklyarenko's socialist discussion circle. There, Lenin fully embraced Marxism and produced a Russian-language translation of Marx and Friedrich Engels' 1848 political pamphlet, The Communist Manifesto. He began to read the works of the Russian Marxist Georgi Plekhanov, agreeing with Plekhanov's argument that Russia was moving from feudalism to capitalism and so socialism would be implemented by the proletariat. 
or urban working class, rather than the peasantry. This Marxist perspective contrasted with the view of the agrarian socialist Narodnik movement, which held that the peasantry could establish socialism in Russia by forming peasant communes, thereby bypassing capitalism. This Narodnik view developed in the 1860s with the People's Freedom Party and was then dominant within the Russian revolutionary movement. Lenin rejected the premise of the agrarian socialist argument, but was influenced by agrarian socialists like Pyotr Kakev and Sergei Nakaev and befriended several Narodniks. In May 1890, Maria, who retained societal influence as the widow of a nobleman, persuaded the authorities to allow Lenin to take his exams externally at the University of St. Petersburg, where he obtained the equivalent of a first-class degree with honors. The graduation celebrations were marred when his sister Olga died of typhoid. Lenin remained in Samara for several years working first as a legal assistant for a regional court and then for a local lawyer. He devoted much time to radical politics, remaining active in Skylarenko's group and formulating ideas about how Marxism applied to Russia. Inspired by Plekhanov's work, Lenin collected data on Russian society, using it to support a Marxist interpretation of societal development and counter the claims of the Narodniks. He wrote a paper on peasant economics. It was rejected by the liberal journal Russian Thought. Early Activism and Imprisonment 1893-1900 In late 1893, Lenin moved to St. Petersburg. There, he worked as a barrister's assistant and rose to a senior position in a Marxist revolutionary cell that called itself the Social Democrats, after the Marxist Social Democratic Party of Germany publicly championing Marxism within the socialist movement. He encouraged the founding of revolutionary cells in Russia's industrial centers. By late 1894, he was leading a Marxist workers' circle, and meticulously covered his tracks, knowing that police spies tried to infiltrate the movement. He began a romantic relationship with Nadia Nadia Krupskaya, a Marxist school teacher, he also authored a political tract criticizing the Narodnik agrarian socialists, what the friends of the people are and how they fight the Social Democrats, based largely on his experiences in Samara. Around 200 copies were illegally printed in 1894. Lenin hoped to cement connections between his Social Democrats and emancipation of labor, a group of Russian Marxist emigres based in Switzerland. He visited the country to meet group members Plekhanov and Pavel Axelrod. He proceeded to Paris to meet Marx's son-in-law Paul Lafargue and to research the Paris Commune of 1871, which he considered an early prototype for a proletarian government. Financed by his mother, he stayed in a Swiss health spa before traveling to Berlin, where he studied for six weeks. At the Stars Bibliothek and met the Marxist activist Wilhelm Liebknecht, returning to Russia with a stash of illegal revolutionary publications. He traveled to various cities distributing literature to striking workers. While involved in producing a newssheet, Rabo Chidello, he was among 40 activists arrested in St. Petersburg and charged with sedition, refused legal representation or bail. Lenin denied all charges against him, but remained imprisoned for a year before sentencing. He spent this time theorizing and writing. In this work he noted that the rise of industrial capitalism in Russia had caused large numbers of peasants to move to the cities, where they formed a proletariat. From his Marxist perspective, Lenin argued that this Russian proletariat would develop class consciousness, which would in turn lead them to violently overthrow Tsarism, the aristocracy, and the bourgeoisie and to establish a proletariat state that would move towards socialism. In February 1897, he was sentenced without trial to three years' exile in eastern Siberia. He was granted a few days in St. Petersburg to put his affairs in order and used this time to meet with the Social Democrats, who had renamed themselves the League of Struggle for the Emancipation of the Working Class. His journey to eastern Siberia took 11 weeks, for much of which he was accompanied by his mother and sisters, deemed only a minor threat to the government. He was exiled to a peasant's hut in Shushinskoy, Minasinsky district, where he was kept under police surveillance. He was nevertheless able to correspond with other revolutionaries, many of whom visited him, and permitted to go on trips to swim in the Yenisei River and to hunt duck and snipe. In May 1898, Nadia joined him in exile, 
having been arrested in August 1896 for organizing a strike. She was initially posted to Ufa, but persuaded the authorities to move her to Shushanskoy, claiming that she and Lenin were engaged. They married in a church on 10 July 1898, settling into a family life with Nadia's mother Elizaveta Vashilevna. In Shushanskoy the couple translated English socialist literature into Russian, keen to keep up with developments in German Marxism, where there had been an ideological split, with revisionists like Eduard Bernstein advocating a peaceful, electoral path. To socialism, Lenin remained devoted to violent revolution, attacking revisionist arguments in a protest by Russian Social Democrats. He also finished the development of capitalism in Russia, his longest book to date, which criticized the agrarian socialists and promoted a Marxist analysis of Russian economic development. Published under the pseudonym of Vladimir Ilin, upon publication it received predominantly poor reviews. Munich, London, and Geneva, 1900-1905. After his exile, Lenin settled in Peskov in early 1900. There, he began raising funds for a newspaper, Iskra, a new organ of the Russian Marxist party, now calling itself the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party. In July 1900, Lenin left Russia for Western Europe. In Switzerland he met other Russian Marxists, and at a Corsia conference they agreed to launch the paper from Munich, where Lenin relocated in September. Containing contributions from prominent European Marxists, Iskra was smuggled into Russia, becoming the country's most successful underground publication for 50 years. He first adopted the pseudonym, Lenin, in December 1901, possibly based on the River Lena. He often used the fuller pseudonym of, N. Lenin, and while the N did not stand for anything, a popular misconception later arose that it represented, Nikolai. Under this pseudonym, he published the political pamphlet What is to be done. In 1902, his most influential publication to date, it dealt with Lenin's thoughts on the need for a vanguard party to lead the proletariat to revolution. Nadia joined Lenin in Munich, becoming his personal secretary. They continued their political agitation, as Lenin wrote for Iskra and drafted the RSDLP program, attacking ideological dissenters and external critics, particularly the Socialist Revolutionary Party, a Narodnik agrarian socialist group founded in 1901. Despite remaining a Marxist, he accepted the Narodnik view on the revolutionary power of the Russian peasantry, accordingly penning the 1903 pamphlet to the village poor. To evade Bavarian police, Lenin moved to London with Iskra in April 1902, there becoming friends with fellow Russian Marxist Leon Trotsky. In London, Lenin fell ill with Erisipolis and was unable to take such a leading role on the Iskra editorial board. In his absence, the board moved its base of operations to Geneva. The second RSDLP Congress was held in London in July 1903. At the conference, a schism emerged between Lenin's supporters and those of Julius Martov. Martov argued that party members should be able to express themselves independently of the party leadership. Lenin disagreed, emphasizing the need for a strong leadership with complete control over the party. Lenin's supporters were in the majority, and Lenin termed them the majoritarians. In response, Martov termed his followers the minoritarians. Arguments between Bolsheviks and Mensheviks continued after the conference. The Bolsheviks accused their rivals of being opportunists and reformists who lacked discipline, while the Mensheviks accused Lenin of being a despot and autocrat. Enraged at the Mensheviks, Lenin resigned from the Iskra editorial board, and in May 1904 published the anti-Menshevik tract One Step Forward, Two Steps Back. The stress made Lenin ill, and, to recuperate he went on a hiking holiday in rural Switzerland. The Bolshevik faction grew in strength. By the spring, the whole RSDLP Central Committee was Bolshevik, and in December they founded the newspaper Vbud. Revolution of 1905 and its aftermath 
1905-1914. In January 1905, the Bloody Sunday Massacre of protesters in St. Petersburg sparked a spate of civil unrest known as the Revolution of 1905. Lenin urged Bolsheviks to take a greater role in the events, encouraging violent insurrection. In doing so, he adopted senior slogans regarding armed insurrection, mass terror, and the expropriation of gentry land, resulting in Menshevik accusations that he had deviated from orthodox Marxism. In turn, he insisted that the Bolsheviks split completely with the Mensheviks. Many Bolsheviks refused, and both groups attended the Third RSDLP Congress, held in London in April 1905. Lenin presented many of his ideas in the pamphlet Two Tactics of Social Democracy and the Democratic Revolution, published in August 1905. Here, he predicted that Russia's liberal bourgeoisie would be sated by a transition to constitutional monarchy and thus betray the revolution. Instead he argued that the proletariat would have to build an alliance with the peasantry to overthrow the Tsarist regime and establish the provisional revolutionary democratic dictatorship of the proletariat and the peasantry. In response to the revolution of 1905, Tsar Nicholas II accepted a series of liberal reforms in his October Manifesto, after which Lenin felt it safe to return to St. Petersburg, joining the editorial board of Novaya Zizin, a radical legal newspaper run by Maria Andreeva. He used it to discuss issues facing the RSDLP. He encouraged the party to seek out a much wider membership, and advocated the continual escalation of violent confrontation, believing both to be necessary for a successful revolution. Recognizing that membership fees and donations from a few wealthy sympathizers were insufficient to finance the Bolsheviks' activities, Lenin endorsed the idea of robbing post offices, railway stations, trains, and banks. Under the lead of Leonid Krasin, a group of Bolsheviks began carrying out such criminal actions, the best known taking place in June 1907, when a group of Bolsheviks acting under the leadership of Joseph Stalin committed an armed robbery of the state bank in Tiflis, Georgia. Although he briefly supported the idea of reconciliation between Bolsheviks and Mensheviks, Lenin's advocacy of violence and robbery was condemned by the Mensheviks at the Fourth Party Congress, held in Stockholm in April 1906. Lenin was involved in setting up a Bolshevik center in Kvokala, Grand Duchy of Finland which was at the time a semi-autonomous part of the Russian Empire, before the Bolsheviks regained dominance of the RSDLP, at its fifth Congress, held in London in May 1907. As the Tsarist government cracked down on opposition both by disbanding Russia's Legislative Assembly, the Second Duma, and by ordering its secret police, the Okhrana, to arrest revolutionaries Lenin fled Finland for Switzerland. There he tried to exchange those banknotes stolen in Tiflis that have identifiable serial numbers on them. Alexander Bogdanov and other prominent Bolsheviks decided to relocate the Bolshevik center to Paris. Although Lenin disagreed, he moved to the city in December 1908. Lenin disliked Paris, lambasting it as a foul hole, and while there he sued a motorist who knocked him off his bike. Lenin became very critical of Bogdanov's view that Russia's proletariat had to develop a socialist culture in order to become a successful revolutionary vehicle. Instead, Lenin favored a vanguard of socialist intelligentsia who would lead the working classes in revolution. Furthermore, Bogdanov, influenced by Ernest Mack believed that all concepts of the world were relative, whereas Lenin stuck to the orthodox Marxist view that there was an objective reality independent of human observation. Bogdanov and Lenin holiday together at Maxim Gorky's villa in Capri in April 1908. On returning to Paris, Lenin encouraged a split within the Bolshevik faction between his and Bogdanov's followers, accusing the latter of deviating from Marxism. In May 1908, Lenin lived briefly in London where he used the British Museum Reading Room to write materialism and imperial criticism, an attack on what he described as the bourgeois reactionary falsehood of Bogdanov's relativism. Lenin's factionalism began to alienate increasing numbers of Bolsheviks, including his former close supporters Alexei Rykov and Lev Komenev. The Okhrana exploited his factionalist attitude by sending a spy, Roman Malinovsky, to act as a vocal Lenin supporter within the party. Various Bolsheviks expressed their suspicions about Malinovsky to Lenin, although it is unclear if the latter was aware of the spy's duplicity. 
it is possible that he used Malinovsky to feed false information to the Okhrana. In August 1910, Lenin attended the 8th Congress of the Second International and International Meeting of Socialists in Copenhagen as the RSDLP's representative, following this with a holiday in Stockholm with his mother. With his wife and sisters he then moved to France, settling first in Bombon, and then Paris. Here, he became a close friend to the French Bolshevik Inessa Armand. Some biographers suggest that they had an extramarital affair from 1910 to 1912. Meanwhile, at a Paris meeting in June 1911, the RSDLP Central Committee decided to move their focus of operations back to Russia, ordering the closure of the Bolshevik Center and its newspaper, Proletary. Seeking to rebuild his influence in the party, Lenin arranged for a party conference to be held in Prague in January 1912, and although 16 of the 18 attendants were Bolsheviks, he was heavily criticized for his factionalist tendencies and failed to boost his status within the party. Moving to Krakow in the Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomaria, a culturally Polish part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, he used Jagiellonian University's library to conduct research. He stayed in close contact with the RSDLP, which was operating in the Russian Empire, convincing the Duma Bolshevik members to split from their parliamentary alliance with the Mensheviks. In January 1913, Stalin whom Lenin referred to as the wonderful Georgian, visited him. And they discussed the future of non-Russian ethnic groups in the empire. Due to the ailing health of both Lenin and his wife, they moved to the rural town of Bialy Dunajek, before heading to Bern for Nadir to have surgery on her goiter. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?